President Trump hopeful about talks in the future with North Korea after an historic meeting at the DMZ when the president became the first sitting U.S. president to step and cross the line into North Korea. These pictures released overnight by North Korea's state media show that meeting. The two agreed to continue talking about denuclearization. Excuse me. Those talks are expected to happen in the next few weeks. News for Jack's political analyst and public policy director from Jacksonville University, Rick Mullaney, back here on The Morning Show. Rick, historic indeed, but some people question, was this more than just a photo op? Well, the, the reaction to it has been mixed, and by that I mean you've had some people certainly praising it as opening up talks, others claiming that it's just a photo op. And Bruce, at the risk of saying something very sobering, um, I mentioned that I, I think, quite frankly, there may be no U.S. president, Republican or Democrat, who can fully accomplish the denuclearization of North Korea. For the last 30 years, that has been the challenge. President Clinton actually had an agreement in 1994 that they didn't abide by. A year ago in Singapore, we had a generalized agreement that they, nothing happened from it. But I do think if you step back and look at this, the important breakthrough is that talks will continue. They'll go back to the bargaining table. It gives some hope. It does come at a price. But I do think there's a sense of cautious hopefulness here that maybe at the bargaining table we can accomplish something of significance, at least limitations, if not full denuclearization. And look, even the president said without a significant follow-up, this isn't going to go anywhere. And the fact of the matter is that Chairman Kim wants a lifting of the sanctions, and that's something that the president has been reluctant to do in the past. There's just no question about it. Uh, Chairman Kim knows, and he's going to opt, opt out of self-interest. His country is suffering economically. Uh, about 25 million people there. We're at 20 million here in the state of Florida. Very poor country. And one of the keys here on sanctions is the cooperation of both China and Russia. He wants those sanctions lifted, but he is clinging to those nuclear weapons. And quite frankly, it's almost unrealistic to think that you're going to get the complete denuclearization. Hopefully, we can strike some limitations, maybe on the range of those missiles, the number of missiles, where, what they're doing. But for, for the chairman, this was a big win for him, by the way, in many ways. Make no mistake about it. A propaganda win elevates his prestige, his stature on the world stage. So you've opened the door a little bit to some future talks. Kim walks away with some prestige. The president politically gains. The key is the future. When we look back on this historically, what will this have meant? You, you talk about the lifting of sanctions. There was one picture, and you saw that there was a Rolls Royce sitting in the background. And some people said, well, if Chairman Kim can get his hands on a Rolls Royce with these sanctions, he can certainly get his hands on some of the things he needs to build nuclear weapons. And that raised a lot of questions. Well, unfortunately, uh, over the last three decades, as we mentioned earlier, uh, they, they have nuclear weapons. We now know that. Uh, they have been building their stockpile. Even since Singapore and Hanoi, when we walked away from Hanoi last in February, they've continued to build that stockpile. And they've done some short-range testing. So nuclear... So North Korea, as President Obama was leaving the White House, he said to President Trump that North Korea was the one place, of course, of grave concern. And so you see this disparity. He may be in his Rolls Royce, but 10 million of those 25 million people are starving. Stark difference between North and South in terms of economic development and in terms of how those two economies are going. So part of what's going on here, too, is the trade negotiations with China are critically important because China, Russia, and the United States, and, of course, the UN itself, will play an important role in the sanctions in North Korea to, to hopefully bring about some limitation, if not the complete denuclearization of North Korea. So what happened yesterday is part of a bigger equation. Rick Mullaney, exactly. always appreciate it.